Lucas Copy TV studio in Geneva. We are talking about the evolution of private equity liquidity together with Christian de Lint. He is founder and partner of Headway Capital in London. Christian, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much for inviting me here. Thank you for coming. So uh, how has actually private equity liquidity changed over the last 25 years? Well, to put things a little bit in context, I'm, I'm going to take the point of view of institutional investors. So investors that are allocating to private equity as an asset class. And that is a business that's typically done by investing into large funds, uh, Carlyle, Blackstone, KKR, as well as a host of different funds in the venture capital industry, mezzanine, infrastructure space. And when that industry started in the 70s, it was a totally illiquid market. So people would commit to managers into funds and would typically be locked in for 10 or 12 years. And that's how the business started for the first 20 years. In the 19s, you've seen the emergence of what are called private equity secondary funds. And these are dedicated funds that provide liquidity to that market. So they basically offer people that might want to sell during the life of a fund the possibility to sell that to that fund. But in the 90s, it remained very much of a cottage industry. It was small. It's only after the uh, burst of the tech bubble in 2000 that, that that industry became mainstream. So if we look at it now, it's been totally accepted and part of the landscape that you have private equity secondary funds that offer liquidity to private equity investors. Mm -hmm. And how do you think the liquidity in private equity is going to evolve? It's um, uh, what we've seen over the past uh, years is the emergence as well of um, trading platforms for private equity funds. And, and obviously the idea here is try to make it a very mar a market akin to the public markets where you can trade easily in and out into these funds. And it's in my mind not going to happen. Um, I think you have two big barriers to making the private equity market liquid as the public market. The first one is information. This is private equity, you know, there's no public information, it's not transparent. Uh, and the second one is transferability, you know, to transfer a fund from one investor to another, you typically need the consent of the manager and you have a host of legal tax and regulatory issues as well. So I think whilst you probably see the bigger managers and, and the well-known names, which have a very large base of investors going into situations which are closer to the public markets, being quite liquid, that's also what they're trying to achieve. You still have thousands of other funds which will never reach that level of, of size and, and liquidity and will only be subject to dedicated and professional buyers that provide the liquidity to that market rather than to a public market. Mm -hmm. So how could investors uh, like, uh, benefit through the private equity and the developments in the last years? Well, if you, if you look back at the beginning of the industry, people would have to commit and stay in a certain allocation with a certain manager for, for 10 or 12 years. And, and the biggest benefit from that industry of what that industry has provided to, to the asset class is, is the ability to manage a portfolio. You know, you can now, the secondary market is used by many professional investors as a tool for active portfolio management. And if you look at the smart investors like some of the US endowments, they are very active buyers and sellers on that market. Um, and, and this has also allowed that market to be more available to people that didn't want to do it because they thought, oh, it's so illiquid, I shouldn't invest in it. Now, it's not yet liquid and probably never will be, but at least they know there's an option for liquidity during the life of their investments. So what actually is in interesting for investing in the future? What do you see uh, as a potential in the future? What sectors, what, what industries? That's a, that's a very interesting question. Uh, I think you know, private equity, like, like many sectors, it's subject to trends, to cycles. Uh, you know, private debt has been quite fashionable over the past year. Venture capital is coming big time back. Uh, within the venture capital, you've got sectors that are very hot. Um, then you've got the geographies that are somewhat interesting. You know, a few years back, emerging markets was everything. Now there are more questions about it. But I think if we stay from a point of view of an institutional investor allocating to private equity, you do so, as mentioned, through managers that themselves take about five years to deploy the money you give to them. So within five years, cycles, trends, everything can change a lot. So it's very difficult for an institutional investor to try to time these trends. Um, so I think private equity is, is a long-term game. People need to invest 
as an institution on a constant basis, on a regular basis. They shouldn't go in and out of it. They should take the very long term view, otherwise it doesn't make sense. Mm. So does it make sense to invest in secondaries from private equity? Well, secondary funds, the, the interesting development is has, it has become part of a, um, of a recognized subset of the private equity classes. You know, you've got buyouts, mezzanine, infrastructure, venture. Secondary now, so i.e. the funds that buy people out of their positions in private equity funds, has become a part of the allocation. So many investors see that as part of their allocation and want to have a, some allocation of their private equity into secondaries. So from that perspective, certainly it does. Now, like everything, it's subject to its own trends and cycles, but that's another discussion. Christian de Lind from Headway Capital Partners, thank you very much for being here today and sharing your expertise with us. Thank you for inviting me. And thanks for watching. Do make sure to keep clicking back on the Dukas Copy TV website for latest updates and exclusive interviews. Have a great day and see you next time.